Okay, as I said at the end of the last video, I'm going to show you how I go about checking the intake center line on the cam using the degree wheel and how you change it, which I've already, actually I've already degreed it and checked it. And if you look on my cam sprocket, which I don't have it on top dead center right now, that's why it's pointing that away. I don't have my timing marks lined up. They will if I turn the engine. But um, I had to retard it two degrees to get the desired intake center line for this cam, or at least what's on the card. I've never tried anything different. Uh, I've always been tempted to see if the car will go faster. Because this cam was out of a parts engine. And I had to look up the part number for the cam to get this spec card. And these people are out of business, or so I'm told. At least I've seen online. But the intake center line on this is 102, which means, from what I've read, or the information I've looked up, the intake center line is how it was advanced or retarded. Well, in this case, it was advanced when it was ground. So, and so, and if you... if want a good starting point and you're not sure where to advance your cam to that's the starting point and then you can change it one or two degrees either advanced or retard but um, this is how it was ground and this is where we're going to put it and that's where it's at right now but in order to get that number I had to retard my crank sprocket gear two degrees you see the two R there and there's your zero, and that's 2A, which is 2 degrees advanced. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and put everything back on, just show you how I went about doing that. And here's my old cam degree kit. Old, outdated, but it still works. The small degree wheel that nobody likes anymore. All kinds of homemade tools over the years. I think you remember me making these. That's got nothing to do with the green cans. That was spring installation and stuff. But this this old um, the green kit came with a videotape, which I think is the easiest instructions I ever seen anyone do a video on. VHS. Not many people have VHS, but believe it or not, I still have one in the house. And I also ordered this uh, little tool here from Summit for thirty five dollars. It was well worth it. I thought about making one. What it is, it's it's got two different keyways, and if you order one of these, you got to remember to measure the snout on your crank because there's different sizes. Make sure it does fit your crank, and you can put your degree wheel over this snout, and the screws. right on there and then we gotta find top dead center and move that back to zero and I'll show you how we do that when I start the actual degreeing of the cam or checking it and it's a handy little tool I, I thought about making one but it just would have been took a lot of time and for $35 you can't beat it you almost can't buy the steel today for 35 bucks unless you got it laying around so I'm gonna mount the camera on a tripod and the first thing I'm gonna do is to find, show you how to find exact top dead center. So now we're just going to put our homemade piston stop on here. Really nothing special, just a piece of angle iron. Bolt screwed into the middle with a lock nut to hold it still. A couple of holes here to go into the head bolt hose. Doesn't have to be a piece of angle iron, it could be a thicker piece of metal or you could buy one if you want. They also make stops if you get the heads on, you can screw the uh, you can screw it in the spark plug holes.
Now I'm going to turn the turn this thing clockwise until I touch that piston stop, and my pointer is reading about 46 and a half degrees. And what we do is we crank the engine backwards. And it should read. Forty-six and a half degrees. I'm getting forty-five and a half. So I'm going to move it a little bit. About half of the difference. So we'll go to right at forty-six. Snug it down a little bit with these channel locks. And I'm going to turn it back the other way and make sure it reads 46. Pretty close to it. So now we take our stop off. We should be able to move that. So now, whenever we go to zero, we should be right at top dead center. And it, just going by the visual, it is. Now we put our dial indicator. What I have here is a lifter, an old solid lifter with a bolt crammed in it, stuck in there tight. See a little tape wrapped around it. Don't worry, it's solid doesn't wiggle or anything and the only reason that bolt is stuck in there is because of the the only indicator mount I have is this magnetic one with these attachments and I don't have a dial indicator long enough to reach down there all the way to the lifter so we want to make sure we got enough travel when that lifter comes up and I believe we do so what I'm going to do is, we're on top dead center, and I'm going to run this engine around clockwise until I get maximum lift on this lift. This is the intake valve, by the way, too. Because we are looking for intake center line. You just after it starts moving, I'm going to get the longer rinse because a little more leverage is kind of easier to control it when you get to that maximum lift. When you get the maximum lift, it will slow down a little bit and stop moving. When it stops moving, you want to stop cranking the engine, reset it on zero. And you want to go a little bit past 50 thousandths after it starts to go back down. Then you want to back the engine up counterclockwise, take it to 50. And we have 158 and a half degrees. What we're going to do is we're going to record that. And now what we're going to do I'm 
I'm going to keep cranking the engine backwards, back to maximum lift. Then we'll go past it, still going counterclockwise, take it back to 50 thousandths, pass the other side with maximum lift. It's pretty close to it right now. And we look at our degree wheel again, and we have, it looks like, about 46 degrees. So we take our 158 and a half plus 46 equals 204 and a half. Divide that by 2, 102 and a quarter. Now last time I got exactly 102. Uh, you're not going to get the exact degree every time. I mean, you, if you're within 1 degree, you're, you're fine. And like I said, 102 is what we're shooting for. So that's how you determine that. And that tells us that we have a 102 intake center line, which is what the card recommends. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Something else you can do, I wanted to show you. Is, um, now this cam is supposed to be 677 lift. I'm going to take it to maximum lift. Now it's not going to read 67, 677, but this is a way you can find out your actual advertised lift. Now we're going to set, there's maximum lift at zero. And we'll go ahead and see there's 100 thousandths, 200, 300, Actually, it would be 385. Now, this cam is a lot bigger than 385 lift, we know. But how you're supposed to figure that is... Let's see, let's go 0.385 times 1.7, which is my rocker arm ratio. I have 1.7 rocker arms. If they were 1.6s or 1.5s, you times it by 1.5. This one says, does it say it right there? Yes, it does. Actually, it's 1.73. You can see that. Six sixty-six left. And if you look right here, let's see, where is it? Intake list 675, exhaust 678. So, if you don't know your cam's exact lift, that is one way to figure it. So, that's all there is to this video. All I wanted to show you is that the cam is where it's supposed to be according to the cam card. Uh, maybe after I get this running and I get time, which I doubt I will, I would like to try retarding it two more degrees and setting it at like 104, which is a 104 or 106 is more normal for a drag engine. Like I said, this cam was originally out of a boat engine, which has been tested, set at 102 in this car, and it ran really well. So, that's enough babbling about that, and what we have left now is we want to clean a bunch of parts. I'm still waiting on some valve grinding or lapping compounds so I can resurface my valves. Uh, no serious grinding because there's no damage to them or anything. If you remember, I did the... Uh, leak down check on it and it didn't leak down at all honestly they probably don't need it but I'm gonna do it anyway while it's apart so we're waiting on that compound to come in next so thanks for watching